Hello everyone, it's Toby from Toby's Open Sketch and today we are talking about how to simplify processes. I'm going to be using this Feud and Saki pen, a Feud pen. Um, you might know Feud pens often thought of as fountain pens, but you can also get Feud pens which are essentially firm brush pens, which is what this is. Um, you might recognise this video from before, so this is a re-upload with, you'll be pleased to hear, um, improved audio. So I'm just going through some of my more popular previous videos and getting a better audio now that I have better equipment. And the the reference, as it says in the in the uh, video description, this is actually um, sort of looking towards the centre of my hometown, St Neots. Got lovely little sort of perspective laden scene. So working as I often do in this kind of one point perspective, where the vanishing point is in the middle, working from the middle of the scene and then working outwards. So if you set your smallest object first, I find it easier to gradually grow things around. And it's important to to sort of measure. So that smallest point is a measuring point. Perspective is really confusing because we recognize it so easily and um, that we can often just draw what we think's there and it just goes wrong and it looks wrong. We can't understand why because our brain is so good at just seeing it and knowing it. So just take a bit of care and, and measure. That said, when you do make a lot of little mistakes, when you get your measurements wrong and you correct them, people don't notice. You notice because you're hunched over, your paper's staring really, really hard. But other people don't notice. They don't see the scene in front of you. So they, you know, apart from you guys looking, literally looking at the reference with me, um, if you were sat outside or if you'd used your own photo, people would never see the exact scene. So you can you can change it, you can play. Um, and also they just see things which look quirky, these little connecting lines, little mistakes, and they assume that they're intentional because people assume that they look at art and think, well, that's, that's quite nice. So don't beat yourself up, just let yourself be free and make little mistakes, little corrections. These things definitely do not ruin your piece, or at least <laughs> very rarely do. As you can see, as we sketch around, we can start working in little bits of texture as well. And we can start with silhouettes. You see how I'm just filling in now the details and lines within the silhouette. I've got the top of the house, the bottom of the house, and then we can bring in the bottom of the roof. And we can just keep checking. Have we, have we measured things right? How are, we, how are we looking? What details do we want in here? And then we can pop those little details in as well. There's fun little objects like um, our, our lamps and things. And you can see this is a telephone post. And you see how I put it quite a lot higher than it should be. And that's because it's kind of, it's a foreground object. It, it wants to be in the foreground and to pull it out from the rest of the scene, well, we, we move it slightly. And that's another example of a correction that we can make. Placing the foot is really important because that tells us where it is. So you can see that we've got the, the base of that lamppost and then I've just added a tiny bit of pavement around it. So we know where that lamppost is. We know how tall it is. We know where in our scene it is. And that's where the sort of foot, the base of the lamppost is. Moving around the rest of the scene, like I say, it's just simple shapes. So all we're doing is finding shapes. Do you see how this this stacked lot of houses is really complicated, isn't it? If we try and draw those houses, we are going to get lost, or at least I am going to get lost. If I go, right, what's the first shape? Oh, a little triangle. What's the next shape? Oh, look, there's a triangle next to that. And we gradually pull that out. And this is what I was talking about before. Um, you'll see when my hand moves, what I've done is I've drawn a silhouette. I've not drawn a load of houses. I've drawn the top of the houses. And now, we can move along and we can start adding in the details. You might have seen the writing pop up there. Details can hide things as well. So behind all of this complexity, behind this, I'm sorry, in this set of houses is a lot of complexity. In front of it, look at this lovely sign. So this sign, which adds character, just like the lamppost is adding character, and just like the lamppost, we've manipulated the size, that sign is covering a lot of detail and implying so much complexity when really it's just a big square. So use these things, use these features which you might not think are interesting and find ways to make them interesting. Details don't have to be drawn out either. So if we look on the 
on the sort of bits I'm sketching in now, in the middle, or if we look at the right or the left, you can see the houses look very housey. But what have I done? I've sort of done a series of vertical lines. Um, and that's what I'm continuing to do, these windows, these doors. They're little vertical lines. They're, they're just textures, really, on the page. I'm not even finishing off the bottom of the houses in some places. But our brain just knows what's going on. So it just goes, ah, well, clearly this is what was intended. And we don't need to add all those details. In fact, often, if we add details, our brain will see that they're wrong. And if we leave them out, our brain will assume that they're there. So by adding details, we might even be leaving ourselves open to sort of it feeling wrong. Whereas by leaving them blank, we kind of just get happy and get lucky and our brain just easily sees things. This is a really important point here, the, the measuring of the side of the street. So you can see if we pop our pen horizontally and we go up, we meet uh, the right house and the left house is meeting at the same point. This makes our street feel flat. If you get the heights of the bottom of your houses a bit wrong, it can make the, the street feel like it's on a big slope. Worth just thinking about that. You need to think about both the silhouette at the top, but also where you're sort of finishing things. You don't have to completely finish things, and actually by leaving the bottom of the houses a bit loose, you might find it easier to get away with some errors in measurement. Um, and you can always change it. If you have got it wrong, you can always come in and change it. Um, or add a bit more just confusion with some more sort of suggestions of detail. But yeah, just using a little pen as a horizon, as a, as a horizontal checker, can be a really useful way of making sure you get that measurement right. Now just a few sort of um, shadows, really. So we, we can use our pen to suggest those shadows in the the curbs. We can add some more shadows on the sides of buildings. We can even add more details. We can add these little road markings, which aren't really there, but add a lot of contrast, interest, um, to otherwise what could just be a blank space. Texture's always fun, so just filling in a few little scratchy tiles and... Again, this all sort of textures can build up. I've done a, a little class on YouTube about, I called it advanced hatching, which I think is a bit of a cheeky name, I think. But um, the idea was um, to use things like textures to build up shadow. So just by leaving a wall blank, it looks like it's in light. If you sketch in a lot of bricks, it looks like it's in shadow. And if you've watched any of my videos, you'll also know I love a good wire. And these wires for me at least, they sort of bring everything together. They they link, um, they imply a real effort to detail, but they're just big sweeping lines which link, which obscure some inaccuracy perhaps behind, and which produce a, quite a fun effect really, and a, a more of a flow in the image. They, they bring you places, so you look at that wire and you sort of follow it either up to the pole, which is adding a bit of character, you follow those wires, and you sort of realise from their perspective that we're disappearing into the end of the street. So just having a little look at specific ways that we sketch shapes, just specific ways that we suggest details, specific ways that we get flow in our image, and and then we can say we're done with our sketch. And all of this done with that Fudensaki pen. So just one single pen to create lots of different lines. Next, onto the colours. So this is a detailed sketch, and one one concept that I'll cover soon in a in a lesson is about sort of density of line work. And you can see here the density is quite high, both because of the number of lines, but also because we've used that feud pen, you've got quite a lot of bold lines. And with a bold sketch, I think, comes the need to be a bit looser with your colours. So a, a tight, certain sketch gets loose colours, gets more of an expressive feel to those colours. So we're starting off with the sky, lots of water, a wet on wet approach and popping a bit of um, cobalt blue in there, which produces, you can see it just unfolding, billowing out those lovely colours. And we're letting them flow and we're gonna merge and blend. We're taking hints from what's going on. So in that sky, you can see that lovely sort of glow that um, sort of distant, slightly dusky glow, and you can tell from the light that there's a bit of it's sort of late in the evening. And then we can use that. We can add these oranges in, which kind of let that that glow 
gently blend in with that blue. You can see because it's wet and we touch in some dense pigments like some dense cobalt, you can see that things still produce these lovely effects. And we can use those pigments we've already put in. So if you use a bit of colour theory, orange and blue neutralise. So you can produce these shadows. So that's what we're talking about, is producing a bit of shadow to contrast with light, to contrast with that blue sky, to contrast with those bold oranges. But we can do it just with the colours already on our page. And that means the shadows have a similar feel. They're not a sort of jarring presence. Then we can continue to move things around, dot in a bit more orange, leaving lots of white space as well. So leaving the roofs at the moment nice and bright, which I think is a really lovely way of, of just producing, again, contrast on the page. It doesn't have to stay that way, but we can start that way and see what develops. I'm really enjoying the orange in this, and I wasn't necessarily intending to get so much orange initially on, but when you see an effect that you like on a page, go for it, experiment. For me, I loved how this orange, this is Transparent Pyrrole Orange um, by Daniel Smith, by the way. It's one of my favourite sort of punchy colours. And I love it, it's very flat and it, it billows out in a really beautiful way and produces a really lovely sort of glow. The blue that I've added then to contrast is an Indanthrone blue. And that's just trying to provide something slightly different to that cobalt blue, a bit deeper shadow. But we really only use three, maybe four colours. I think there's a little touch of Scarlet Lake in places. So yeah, here's adding a little bit of Scarlet Lake, a nice red, just to some chimneys. But that, those colours, the fact that we've used a bit of colour theory, the fact we've simplified our sketch, means that we can get away with really loose, lovely colours, contrasting light, getting a bit of glow in the sky, getting a lovely blue sky, but also getting these deep and interesting shadows. Now remember, you can always, well you should always, sign your name, be proud of what you've done and just enjoy it, even if it's not exactly what you meant. You can see here this is now dry and, and you can see how much things have faded. So these colours you might have thought, oh, they're alarmingly bold, but actually you can be risky with watercolours because they fade, they go more transparent as they dry. Anyway, that is my sketch done. Lovely little sketch of St. Neil's. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed, of course, the new voiceover with better audio. Um, happy sketching.